Great. Thanks, Sharon. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee. Um, as is our custom, I'm going to ask you to indicate your presence uh, vocally. Sharon? Here. George? Here. Paul? Present. Pam Rooney? Here. It's nice to see you, Pam. Christine? Yeah. Nice to see you. Jennifer? Here. And we are going to be joined. Uh, I see colleagues from FAA have joined us, and our own Bob Parent is also going to join us. Uh, Hi, everyone. Was... Hey, how are you? Thank you for coming. Sure. Uh, we never turn down an invitation, Austin. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, uh, we have some minutes, but I don't know if people have had a chance to look at the minutes. I so, didn't share it with people yet. Okay. So we have minutes from the 7th and the 21st. We'll lay them over until the next time that we are, we are together. Uh, the next item on our agenda is uh, uh, Pam. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. I have a question. Is there some kind of a folder for this committee where Sharon, can you help? Can be loaded? Uh, no, I can't help, but I bet Paul can because Angela does it all. It's all on the town's website. Oh, <laughs> I can oh. find out. Angela's not, not here. I can look. So we'll let, we'll let you know. I believe there yeah. is a folder for the uh, for the committee, um, Christine. Yeah, if you just go to the committees on the town website and look up our committee, and then on the right it says you can find all the agendas or packets or whatever. Yeah. And there is a new packet for today up there. So yeah, we should, should have the should have the minutes that we're not gonna yes. we're not gonna approve. Okay, and I heard there's not a SharePoint site that we could see without having to go to the public domain. Yeah, this, this group does not use SharePoint. Only okay. the council uses SharePoint. Thank you. And at some point, someone will tell me what SharePoint is because I'm now curious about it. But in any case, next is a report from the town manager, Paul. So uh, we have submitted a request to the Mass Board of Library Commissioners to extend their grant deadline. This is a sort of a no cost item for the town. It maintains our, keeps our options open. So I believe that um, they will entertain this on June 6th at their, at their uh, meeting. Okay. Uh, any questions for the town manager? It is our hope. Oh, yeah, Pam. I, I just have to ask if if you could clarify the no cost option because it seems like every every option has some cost associated it. Yeah. it. Um, do we know what the costs are associated with delaying it X number of months? So uh, what I'm saying is that if the library, if the MBLC says um, no, then we know there's no cost to request the extension. That's what, I, that's what I meant to say. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. If there's a delay in the actual construction, that there is a cost associated with that. But in terms of requesting the MBLC, it's there it was you know they don't charge us for it, requesting it. Um, and if they say they don't want to extend it, that's been very important information for us. If they do extend it, then it lets us continue to have the conversation. Okay. Any other questions for the town manager? So I'm under the impression, Paul, that we are here to discuss uh, possible changes to the design uh, of the uh, of the of the building and their cost implications. Are you under that same impression, Paul? That would be useful information. I'm not sure if Ellen and and Josephine are 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 ready to start sharing some of the in insights that they've looked at. But yes, yes. Yeah, so let me just prepared. let me just say, let me just say I, I thought Paul might might have done this, but I just want to say, um, after our last meeting, we asked um, FAA 
to come back to this committee with uh, alternatives for this committee to review, um, alternatives that might um, alter the design and save some money in the process. We also asked FAA to give us a sense of what the cost would be of pursuing those alternatives. If there's to be redesign work, uh, what would the cost to the to the trustees, to the town be uh, for pursuing these um, alternatives? So Ellen, Josephine, do you have anything that you might wanna share with us? Yes, uh, Josephine and I uh, put together a spreadsheet. Now I'm happy to share that. Austin. Great, thank you very much. I need to be able to be uh, share whoever the host is. Sharon is waving. She's going to enable it in one second. Okay. So just um, we so we've been talking about this. I don't maybe for three weeks or a month, <clears throat> and there's a lot been on our um, in discussion. Do you see my screen? I'm no. failing at this. Here we go. Thank you. So we we started out. Um, really just a, a higher level of what, what we can do. And then after a number of conversations over the weeks, uh, it's been determined that this is, has to be a bigger digging to get yep. us anything significant. So Austin, would you like me to go through each one of these or? I, 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 it would be great, uh, Ellen, if okay. you just would kind of walk us, give us an overview of things that, that these are things that we could do um, and the savings associated um, with them. Right. So the other part of the equation is we're still um, shooting for mid-September to get this rebid back on yep. the streets, as they said. And we had a conversation with our estimator today. He reconfirmed that. So that's what we're basing this on. So right. you can see we've got the the VE item, the description, the achievable within the 10-week time frame, and then approximate uh, estimate. Uh, and I'll go through these. So the first group is is landscape and utilities. So defer ocean stone benches, and that's uh, be benches in the landscape that at the patio entrance um, that we have been uh, having on the plans for uh, quite a long time. But it could possibly construct them at a later date. Also defer the children's courtyard. If you remember, that's at the front of the building on the right hand side. We were creating that fenced in area for mm -hmm. the children. Um, and I can go through the pricing as, actually. So the first item, the Goshen stone benches around, it, these are approximate numbers, 112,325. <laughs> the courtyard is uh, just over a hundred thousand. Uh, defer the um, uh, the stormwater water garden planting. So we have, we're gonna create that swale, but the plantings can come in later. That would be a $30,000 savings. Uh, delete rain garden bridge crossing. So uh, if, I know folks know what that is. So that that would be um, an $80,000, approximately $80,000 um, uh, savings. But what would have to go in would have to ha would have a concrete culvert. So the, the, the descriptions are a little, little bit more, um, mm -hmm. a little bit more information. Delete catenary lighting out back. That was our out back outdoor uh, patio in the rear of the building at the back addition. That's a, a savings of just over six thousand dollars. And delete site utility upgrades at fire station. So this is it, it, the utility upgrades and parking lot paving adjacent to the fire station. And the question is, could these be broken out um, separately? Uh, and that's, a, I think, a, a question that we would have to have with the town. And that would be a significant savings. A, a 2000, 2050, yeah. Uh, on the interior of the building. So Ellen, this is, yes. Ellen, I just want to stop you. That, that was $250,000, yes. is that right? Yes, correct. 
Now, just I'm I'm sorry. Um, would any of these six things involve significant redesign work from your point of view? Uh, not some design work, but not significant. Okay. Thank you. It's more deleting and uh, omitting. Um, interior existing building. So what we have now in the base of the of the project is we're taking, because there's asbestos in all the plaster. So the um, our drawings call for removing all the asbestos plaster in the building. So in able to... To be able to do that, we have to take off all of the historic trim work. And, and we were taking that off, cleaning it to get the asbestos off it, storing off site. Then the new walls would be would be installed in the new wood trim, the old wood trim reinstalled. Mm -hmm. And that's a significant savings. That's about a million dollars. And again, we had another meeting with our estimator today, and he confirmed these numbers. Uh, it's a significant uh, amount of work. Yeah, Ellen, I just want to make, I'm sorry, I just saw Paul Bockelman's hand. Paul? Oh, sorry. Paul. Uh, just to clarify, so like if I look at item four, um, delete the rain garden crossings and replace the $80,000, is that the net cost? Yes. Okay, so that that includes substituting the alternate. Okay, Correct. that's all I want to clarify. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Paul. So this, I just wanted to point out, this is significant. That what I did want to make a, a note: the that center hall interior stair, that one that we have been keeping, we would still keep that, right? We'd work around that because that we all know that's significant to the project. Um, item eight is right now we own replacing all the window sash in the in the historic building with new wood insulated glass um window sash so there was an option just to keep what we have and repair them and that's kind that's hard to put a number on you know because we don't need know the exact how much repair they need but you know we think it's in the seventy thousand dollar range and we we'll have to confirm that one uh the next one is is actually i should it's n number nine is actually it involved the CLT, so we would remove all the CLT on the project. The CLT, the wood decking and the wood columns would all go and would replace it with steel, metal deck, and concrete. And that would have a, a significant savings of um, 500000 That also includes changing our interior monumental stair, the new one we're going in with. Again, that would be just steel, metal deck, you know, just a basic stair. Uh, let's see. Oh, so the, Adam, if we decide that we want to take out all the asbestos in, in the project, one of the locations that we could have significant savings is in the, what will now be the reading room. Mm -hmm. It's the, that's the large arch ceiling. And that's very intricate and detailed. There is an option if we were to remove all the asbestos except for that ceiling, we'd have a hundred and thirty-six thousand dollars savings. Because that, I mean, it, you've all been in there. It's it's very intricate, and and this sloping plaster uh, ceiling is not something that a lot of tradesmen can do well these days. Mm -hmm. And the uh, number eleven is change synthetic sleet on the roof to asphalt shingle. And that would be 227,950 savings. Again, approximate. Uh, building exterior addition, item number 12, change the brick to fiber cement siding. So this is a savings of approximately 143,448. So there is some savings there. It's a it's a different, you know, brick is pretty low, no maintenance in fiber cement. After 10, 10, 20 years, you will have to paint it. Delete roof monitor. Um, that savings, we would infill the roof and not have that monitor over the stair. 
that's a savings of 77, just over 77,000. And then item number 14, which is, you may not, this may not, you may not understand this, but it's changing the curtain wall windows to a storefront window. That would be a savings of 150,000. And that, it, the windows will look slightly different, but they'll perform just as well. So that we 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 feel you know comfortable making that. And the last two items, 15 and 16, omit the Civil War and art gallery, reconfigure admin spaces. That's a total redesign. And mm -hmm. we we do not we we feel we cannot achieve that in the 12, 12 weeks that we have budgeted for time. Mm -hmm. And then uh item 16, leave the 1927 building as id that is. That would be again a a large redesign, and we could not achieve that in in twelve weeks. Mm -hmm. So the total savings again approximately is two hundred eight hundred and eighty seven eight eighty four. Two million. Two million. Right. Um, Ellen, uh, help us first of all. Thank you for this list. Help us understand uh, how much would um, how much would this cost us to do? So let's say we said yes, we want to do all of this. What would the cost of the redesign be? We, uh, to be honest, Austin, we don't have that number. I can give you a range, and I would I would not want to be held to that till we actually figured out of each line item, the number of hours it would need to take. But if you think of something like the changing this synthetic slate to asphalt, sounds easy, but it, we have to touch 20 details, right? So it's, 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 these sound easy, but they're, but they're not. Um, so we, when we had on the table, Josephine, correct me if I'm wrong, we had the changing from CLT, um, what were the other two we had on the table initially? The existing windows. The existing windows and? CLT, existing windows, and the millwork. And the millwork. So those three things, we were over a we were over 300,000. So these other things um, would be, it would be a few hundred thousand more at least because it's it's again it's public bid we so we have to change every time it says you know the the whole fiber cement board that that's a huge redesign effort huge because that's every wall section every detail of the exterior so ellen again i'm i'm i, I understand that you can't give us a precise figure but are you talking about in the ballpark of five or six hundred thousand dollars. I would say I would say eight. I would it's say eight. Eight hundred thousand dollars to be safe. I would say eight. In Austin, that could go lower, but that just to be, you know, conservative. Right, and uh, depending on what we decided we wanted to do by way mm -hmm. of redesign, uh, some of these figures, some of these possibilities are more significant in terms of how much it would yes. cost for you. Yes. So just if you could give us a couple of the ones that are the more more significant in terms of your your work. I would say um, item number 12. 12, okay. Um, item number 11. 11. Uh, Josephine... Please chime in. Yeah. Um, nine is, you know, the CLT changes. Is yes, that's significant. The largest. Yeah. That's a redesign, including our structural engineer and re-coordination with MEP. Okay. And then just a couple of things, Ellen, to remind uh, everyone in this meeting and everyone who is attending. Uh, could you remind us of... Um, uh the the thing that you said the the roof monitor could you remind us yes. what that so 
above we originally we had a skylight above the stair right yeah so because the floor plate in the addition is quite large so mm -hmm. we were trying to get some light down into the center of that over the stair so we had we had a rectangular section of the roof yeah. lifted and we had windows in it yep yeah. okay and can you say a, a, a word or two about fiber cement siding? So, uh, Josephine, I don't know if you have if you can bring the drawings up or something. Um, so, if and I think we need the drawings for this the an exterior, even if it's a rendering, Josephine. Um, the on the put in your mind the back of the building where we have we have this pop out section of the floor plan on 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 two floors and that we're cladding and it's fiber cement board but it's clapboards so it's it's new tech it's not new technology it's been around for a long time but it's it's a reinterpretation of a wood clapboard which has a lot of maintenance um but these fiber cement board they do not they don't rot um they need to be painted i want to say it's 20 years but we can confirm that um and Josephine's getting us an elevation. So we would change that. And then one thing actually that I I apologize because I did this in such a in a rush this afternoon. We also have on the table, but it's not in this list, is the addition roof. We can just point this out. Mm -hmm. So Josephine, do you want to mm -hmm. point out the you might want to zoom in on that lower elevation? Oh, well, let me stop sharing. Oh, you, you're already sharing. Can you see my screen now? Yes, you're you're so good. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is the rear um, north elevation. Yeah. So, um, did you did, were we hopping into the roof? Monitor? No. Do talk, about, talk the, about the, the, the fiber thing? cement. Yes. Yeah. So this pop up that we have in the on the rear edition right now is that fiber cement board that. Ellen was discussing. So it's go ahead. linear. It's linear clapboards. Right. And so the idea would be that where the brick is, that would be wrapping it. And um, and I think, you know, we'd still probably, like we mentioned um, earlier, have, you know, a brick at the base or something at the base that, you know, to the bottom of the window, right? And then mm -hmm. go with the siding, the hardy board siding above that. Can you point out the brick locations just here? Oh, sure. Um, so Pretty much, let me zoom in a little more. You can see the hatch pattern um, of you know where the brick is currently. Mm -hmm. But um, if we kept brick at the base, we would run it to probably the windowsill, you know, to like this location. And we would do that for maintenance. It would it would be more durable than the fiber cement. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. You can see the orange line that you just drew. Yeah, right. So it would that would remain. Regular, and when regular. I when I say um, it's more durable, it's for the lawnmower, the weed whacker, the you know that kind of thing. Once it's you know up higher, people aren't really going to be have doing anything touching it or anything. Mm -hmm. So that's that. The other thing that, and I apologize, it's not on this list. It's the the standing seam metal roof. We're also getting a price. Uh, an estimate to change that to um, asphalt shingle. Hmm. And that just being on the front rendering that shows that extent. We could get certainly a gray, um, but it, it wouldn't quite look exactly like that. Right. Ellen, you made reference to uh, the, the windows. Yes. Uh, you want to just remind everybody where what you were talking about. You're talking about windows on the north side. Yes. So, Josephine, if you could go back to that. So, all of the we've we've have all of the windows on the north side, including that that large section above the entrance. It's yep. called curtain wall. It, it's a robust system for that has large spans. Mm -hmm. But we can we did it here for the aesthetics uh, of consistency, right? But we we an option would be is the smaller windows, everything except for that large uh, 
vertical expanse over the over the door. The rest of it would get storefront. So it's the system isn't as deep. I think it's four and a half to five mm -hmm. as a as opposed to the curtain wall. Most people would not notice a difference. But um, what I was asking you to do, I'm sorry, is also, could you show us what was there originally? You had the window treatment on the on the on the rendering. Oh, it's the same. It's the same, Austin. No, we but I wanted I wanted you to show us the the living color version. So to oh, speak, okay. If you could. Sure. What was on the rendering? Yeah. So oh, can yeah. you zoom in? It's just it would the window would have the same configuration, the yep. same mullions and everything, same color, but it would be a storefront product as opposed to a curtain wall. Okay. Okay, I thought this is on um, this is on the west side of the building. This is the whole addition. I understand, but but what I'm looking at now is I'm looking at the west side. That's correct. Could you show us the back side, the north side, as it is oh. right now in, in the renderings? The renderings. Uh, if you give me a second, I can. If it's easy on. enough, if it's a. I just need to. It'll just take off. a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. off the screen for you guys. A whole bunch. I'll just open them and start panning through them. Oh, these are old. Bear with me. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's 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 what I wanted to see. That's what I wanted to see. Okay. Okay, Ellen and Josephine. So I'm now going to ask if people have um, questions uh, that uh, they they want they want to ask now. Paul. So I have some simple but probably stupid questions, but because um, I do not know your work, is there such a thing as like search and replace? And like when you talk about the shingles, is there? I'm not sure if in CAD or whoever you do this in. Like if you just says wherever it says this, just replace it with that. Is that an option? One day with AI, I think. <laughs> One day with AI. <laughs> We're just not there yet. Okay. You so mean as far as, as far as like the details and all the drawings, do you mean, Paul? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, I'm or just the shingles. I'm just thinking about that. Like, because you, I think the the cost. It sounds like what Ellen's identifying is that there's so many sheets that have to be touched and revised, yeah. and it's a time-consuming process. Right, and of course, you know, it's the drawings have to, you know, go out be for updated, public bid, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. The detail, drawings, so the okay. detail is going to change. There'll be a different kind of flashing detail, different connection detail. So those things we have to go and change. Okay. It's just okay. not the label. But okay, no, good, that's a good question. That's fair. Um, you know, we had talked about the book sorter. And is that, I didn't see that on your list at all. That's not in our budget. That's not in our estimate. Okay. That's part of your project budget. Okay. Okay. Um, and then in terms of the design fee, if I'm looking at this right, it seems like it's a $2.9 2 .9 million in savings and an $800,000 cost to redesign. That's like a twenty-eight percent design fee. That seems kind of high. Are you just? I, are you just just pull? That's, you just pour, that's a guess. I, I, it's a that's totally a guess. guess. Mm -hmm. And because I, if I lowball it, that's you're got you'll stick with that, and it may not be accurate. Right. Uh, and that you, you as a client team are no different from every other client. If you give a low number, that's what everybody remembers. So that that would Fair. be, that would be the that would be high. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just on that question, George, before you get in, Ellen, when would you be able to give us real numbers? 
when you t what the in the perfect world, Austin, if you tell us which ones you will would like to consider and which ones you will not consider, that mm -hmm. is helpful to us. Um, and then we can we can uh, uh, you know go through our set of documents and figure out what needs to be changed. So the answer to my question is until you get guidance yeah. from us, uh, you're not going to be able to give us a, a real hard number about this is what Correct. the cost of the redesign would be. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got George and then Pam and then Sharon. George? You're muted, George. He's fiddling. There we go. Hey, oh. <laughs> this laptop has a hard button. Um, in regards to number 11, uh, switching out the synthetic slate for asphalt, is that something that we would have to go to the historic commission for, for a waiver of some kind, seeing as that kind of hits the historic preservation restriction on the exterior of the building? I And that's a great question, George. That... It, I would assume, but uh, but I can't speak for the town. I mean, because also, George, we went, you know, uh, the planning board, they, everybody looked at the outside of the addition. We got a lot of people, um, you know, agreeing to do what we, we, we have done. So I'm not sure we would ask for some guidance from, from your team um, right. is who we need to go back to see. Um, that's all yeah, I got. That's Thank you, George. That's um, that's great because that also impacts time in terms mm -hmm. of what it is that we might um, we might we might be wanting to do. Before I get Pam and Sharon in, there is a question that if you were to replace the CLT steel, what would be the impact on the environmental sustainability of this building, the embodied carbon figure? Do you have any idea about that? I'll let Josephine speak to that. Right. So what would change is be embodied carbon, and that's mm -hmm. derived from the Teddy or the tally analysis that we had done. Um, we would not plan to do another analysis unless you had requested it. So we wouldn't mm -hmm. know what those numbers are and what the impact is without that analysis. And the overall environmental sustainability. Do you have a sense, the EUI, I mean, of what any of these design changes might mean for that? No. Um, okay. So for the EUI, yeah, we haven't looked into into that. That's the energy use intensity. And um, I'm not sure yeah. if any of these would impact that. We'd have to look further into that. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Pam. No problem. Um, I think Ellen mentioned that the book sorter was not in the budget, that it's in something called a project, a project budget. Uh, are there other pieces of equipment, any of the furnishings and fixtures, are they also not in your budget? Or Correct, correct, Pim. So the way our estimator says, clearly, if you flipped a building over, everything fell out that falls out is not in the estimate, right? So it's loose furniture, it's the book sorter, none of that's in the project budget, which I know Colliers has developed for your your group. I don't know who has it, but it, it is there. And all these items are, are listed. Okay, so I, I heard sort of co contradictory things. The numbers are in our overall project budget. They just aren't in the FFA, FAA architectural component. Right, right. so I will just to make it clear, you we we have been commissioned per our contract to do a construction budget that's what we that's what that's what these numbers are based on colliers did a project budget for you guys and that's has all the the fees and all, you know all of that stuff and i know it's available cuz we've mm -hmm. we've okay. reviewed it as a team yeah okay so the the complete project budget is still what was over by 7 million Correct. Project budget. That's correct, Pam. Okay. Bob, do you want to chime in on this? Bob Parrott. Certainly. I was just a clarification on project budget versus construction budget. The book sorter is not carried in the construction budget. So, for instance, deleting the book sorter would not affect the contractor's bid, but it would affect the total project budget. 
and FF&E uh, uh, furniture, furnishings, and equipment similarly is carried in the overall budget, but is not carried in the construction budget. So it wouldn't directly impact the contractor's bid, but it would impact the total project cost. So is it right, Bob, if we were to take out the book sort, the book sort is $400,000, what that would mean is we would have $400,000 to spend on something else, assuming we kept the project budget the same. That would reduce the, yeah, that would reduce the project cost by $400,000, correct? It, it means that we could do one of two things. We could either reduce the project cost by $400,000 or keep the project cost the same, but spend the $400,000 elsewhere, for example, on construction costs. Correct. And, and that same okay. dynamic plays on all of the other non-construction related uh, uh, line items that are carried in the overall project cost Correct. you know the the, the the moving costs the 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 temporary space rental costs things like that are all mm -hmm. um on top of what the contractor bids yeah pam is that helpful thank you very much sharon yeah uh that was one thing that i wanted to clarify the four hundred thousand dollar savings and and mm -hmm. staff have already accepted the fact that uh, that that book sorter is gone. Uh, it could it could come another time, but it, it won't be a part of this project. Um, and so, Ellen, one of my my only other question is um, if, if we move forward and sign a contract with you for eight hundred thousand or seven hundred thousand or whatever yeah. it is, as we work with you, can would that leave an opportunity for us to discover possibly to find other cuts during that process? Yes, yes. You know, anything minor, Sharon, we, you know, we could, if we can easily incorporate it, sure. But if it's something major, redesign or go study this or go that, we won't be able to do that in the 12 weeks. But if it's something small, for sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah, far. You're muted. Sorry. Um, so I'm uh, just a quick question about the 12 weeks. Does that does that start now or does that start after our meeting with the MB, uh, MBLC? Uh, we assumed it was after the meeting with MBLC. After the 6th. OK. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I think, uh, Christine, before I get you in th there, we'll think together a little bit about process. We are seeing these things for the first time. Right. Uh, we'll need some time to digest them. Mm -hmm. People will need to go back and look at the renderings and the plans and compare what it is you're now talking about to what it is that we have been, mm -hmm. we, what it is that we've been seeing. So there's going to be some period where we're going to need to deliberate about uh, how we're going to move forward with and which of these things we might want to, we might want to value engineer. Mm -hmm. Christine. Yeah, um, first, thanks to FAA, Ellen, and Josephine for doing this. Um, I also, I poured through the 62-page estimate and made my list, and and you guys hit them all. I just have a few more questions on a couple things. Um, regarding, it's under parti uh, partitions and column covers. It's mm -hmm. over a half mil. Um, you know, they're like 2,000 or $1,800 a piece. And I was wondering what that was. Was it fancy? Could it be a little less fancy? And does it change with the CLT removal? Go ahead, yeah. Josephine. So we haven't thought through yet what we propose with the CLT removal, but we did have wood in some cases because we were um, mimicking the CLT structure wow. where we couldn't have the glue lands. So um, so I would imagine that that number would come down, but we definitely haven't looked into, you know, what the changing of wood to steel means for, for the rest of the structure. Right. Thanks. And if I could add in, so we, when we, if we switch to steel, so the columns will be steel and we will cover those with gyp, right? They'll have a gypsum plaster. So there'll be, it'll be less than that probably, Christine, because it's not wood. Um, so. But yeah, there'll be more of that because the 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 glue the glue lambs we weren't 
covering. It was the steel that we covered to make it look like a glue limb. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you guys were looking at that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the other thing is we had had a lot of talk in the past about whether we were going to have solar or be solar ready, but I do notice that it's in the estimate there's photovoltaic panels, um, almost a half million dollars. Are, which are we and what can we do? So per the building code, we have to be photovoltaic ready. So you could, we could delete the panels if yeah. you choose to do that. And then that, we yeah. go after a grant or yeah. something. Yeah, we did the Framingham Chris McAuliffe Library. I think they got the panels seven years after it opened. So it, it, the roof will be ready to take the panels. There you go. Yeah, I know there's a lot of programs out there. So that could be another thing that we talk about yep. as an option being sure. a half mile. Well, that's big. Okay, we can add that to the list. And then just a couple little smaller, small things. Um you know, I know we have to have tile in the bathrooms and everything. I didn't know where else tile was going or, of course, the wood floor. I was assuming that was going into some of the rooms mm -hmm. in the old um, part of the building. But is there any thought of more um, uh, linoleum or carpet just as a savings? Yeah, we can look at that because we did have some of the in the historic rooms Mm -hmm. um we were putting in wood but we can look at that for sure and uh i noticed there's like a bazillion different lights which i know is nice but i wonder if there would be any savings in uniforming those i know for maintenance wise it makes it easier to george would probably love that mm -hmm. um i didn't know if there was any savings there um well that so that that the so the the electrical numbers, the sub filed sub bids came in on or below, right? So that, so if, to go back, we would that would be a, a redesign fee for the. Um, I figured that, that's and that small chunk. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to see big things. Um, and the only other one on that was, um, we have a very rigorous um fire suppression. I assume that's just in the yes. collection. That's a big yeah. ticket. I didn't know if we were buying like the Cadillac or if there's any savings on that. I don't know. I, Josephine, do you recall like exactly? Waterproof what... cabinets. I don't know. And <laughs> I'm sorry, it's an archivist. <laughs> I, I don't think we were going for Cadillac. I know we were, we, we talked about the BPL system, Ellen, you know, and what you've yeah. done there, but we definitely um, narrowed that down a bit. We did. Cause that was super expensive. Right. 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 And we did, um, we did take it down from from that system. Um, we could look at it um, yeah. and see if there's anything we could do with that. The same with the communication, um, some of that was pretty expensive. But again, if it's just a moderate, I, I just, you know, what do we really need um, to function as a great library? No, that's a good call. We'll look into that for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. And thanks. So, Ellen um, and Josephine, could you talk a little bit? I was a little, um, I don't know, I followed you all the way around with the replacement of the paneling. So instead of taking it down, doing the asbestos abatement, taking it off site, bringing it back, putting, reinstalling, what would you, what's the. Yes, yeah, so can, Josephine, can you bring up Matterport? Oh yeah, give me just give me a minute. It, that's a good question, Austin. I, it, we can look at the spaces through Matterport, and to, so you guys have a full understanding of what it is we can do. And also, again, just to be clear, uh, the interior where there was a a lot of um, at the roof uh, at the ceiling, uh, that's not going to be there if the CLT is not there is that correct no you won't see wood right you won't will not see wood we we will put in acoustic tile ceilings you know yep. the standard what you would have yep 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 great
And I want to go back, Ellen. So there's mm -hmm. there's a lot of, I mean, there's woodwork all over this building. There's woodwork yes. where the cataloging gets done now. There's woodwork in the director's office. And so when you're talking about um, not putting that historic woodwork back, you are talking about it any of the historic woodwork that's there other than you said the stairs the stairs yeah and the okay. paneling on the stairs yeah. um yep so this yep for example oh yep so for example this stair st will s s excuse me save the stair the wood paneling would have to come out and be reinstalled on the left side of the yep. uh, stair but what's on the right side of the hallway and the trim around the doors and all that would would not be would be taken out. And what right would now, be what would be there? That's what I'm what, it, would... what would be there is we have two choices. Yep. We would replicate what's here, which would be a a heavy lift in terms of drawing because there's a lot of it. Or we go back in and just do basic wood trim in a wood jam that you would probably see in the uh, the addition of the of the 1980s wing it's very simple it's what you'd see in a house it's an, it wouldn't be this elaborate and more of a cost savings of course right so the 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 thing of it the cost of and we've talked about this a, a lot yep. not, maybe not with you guys amongst ourselves is is the handling of this so it's it's going to have to be a specialized abatement person because most abatement guys come with a crowbar right this they, they would have to be have more finesse in removing this cleaning the asbestos off um tagging it mm -hmm. of where it goes and then storing it in um, the proper climate mm -hmm. then when the new jip is put in they would then have to fit all of this back in place and mm -hmm. that is is tricky because you know the it the walls currently may be not quite straight, and then the new walls go on mm -hmm. and they're they're straight, and so it doesn't always match up. So there's a lot of work. There's a lot of work in this. Right. The first alternative that you mentioned, I'm trying to now imagine if that woodwork isn't there, is to replace it with with, with some wood product. Is that what you're suggesting? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It would be just flat stock, Austin. Okay. Okay. Uh, Pam. Thank you. Uh, has Has anyone discussed not touching the walls? Period. So that all all of the historic woodwork remains yes. intact, and you don't mm -hmm. touch the walls themselves. Yes. So there's a couple of levels of that, Pam. One is. We don't touch the walls, but we will need problem of the reason we we need to touch the walls are we need to put more electrical outlets in. We need to put new lighting in. We need to do new uh, sprinkler system. All of this requires touching the the asbestos, right? So it, it if it bogs down the construction sequence. So if they have to channel all the asbestos, um, you know, to to run a sprinkler line. They have to ch channel that. They have to channel, um, when I say channel, they have to cut these troughs out through. By the time you're said and done doing all that labor, you you may end up to be at the same cost because that's very, that's high, that, that's 10-day notification, you know, for abatement removal and, and that it's, it's quite, it, it's, it's challenging. We we are doing it on a much much smaller project that the client did not want to take it out and it's been a cost nightmare for them because it's just more GC costs and I think we could um, I don't know Bob you uh, you can certainly chime in on that but we we analyze that as well and then the other thing is that you have a existing library with asbestos all over the place mm -hmm. every time you you know it's just it's it's not a not a good thing to have in your building
not a good thing to have in our building, but what you're saying is one way to proceed is to leave a lot of the asbestos in the building. You yes, we you, you would you would have to do as I I was just saying, uh, yep. Austin. You yep. have to channel it all, and and we can do it that way. That that's that's labor intensive, but that's an option. Okay. The other option that we've talked about today also is that we leave all the trim in place. Take an exact, take a like a knife and cut all the. Yep. If you could point to it, Josephine, cut along all the trim and take that that uh, asbestos out that's available. Mm -hmm. Then we can encapsulate the the ends because there's there's asbestos behind these all this yep. trim. Yep. And encapsulate that. That would give you a little bit more wiggle room on running, you know, electrical and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But in the end, you'll be leaving encapsulated asbestos there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I see Alex. Alex? Thanks. Can you hear me? Yeah, good. Um, I So I guess, Ellen, so if the costs wind up being the same for leaving the wood trim and the paneling, the biggest reason not to do that would be that we keep the asbestos in the building or, and, or is there a, a worry that it's much harder to understand the real costs until you're in the middle of doing it? I don't, I think, I, I think we could make it clear, Alex, if we, if we were to leave the trim and cut around the trim, I think we could make that clear on the documents, what goes right. But if they, if for instance, the paneling uh, by the, where those two chairs are, if we need to put an outlet in there, which we probably do, it's going to be the contract would have to notify uh, an abatement company and do a 10 day notification to cut that hole to run the electrical. It just, it, there's a, it, com, it, it complicates a bit. It makes it easier at the same time because we're, if we do that, we take large swaths of the, uh, of the uh, asbestos out. And that's a benefit. Okay, I guess, I guess I'm trying to. I mean, obviously, if we if we keep the wood paneling, that would be the preference. And if it's the same cost, that seems. So I guess I'm just trying to figure out what I'm missing. That why but the we same. Go that route. But what do you mean the same cost? It it probably, <laughs> it would be cheaper, Alex. It would be cheaper to leave this trim, and right. cut around and take this fast the uh, exposed plaster out. That would be mm -hmm. cheaper than what we have on our drawings now, but there is right. a risk to that. And and the risk to that being during construction, there could be additional asbestos um, that would need to be removed because an outlet's going in or a vent's going in, and it's going through a place that we didn't take the asbestos out because it was behind wood paneling. Right. Okay. I think that's what I was ineffectively trying to say. Um, so while we're on this picture, I guess, so the one thing that we haven't talked about is the staircase, which the removal of the staircase office makes for a more efficient flow of the building. And I know it's been important to some members of the community, but I is removing the staircase uh, even an option within the 12 week period, or is that too much of a redesign? I have no idea what kind of cost savings. I don't, that's a I I have no idea. I um, this has been it's been our marching orders so long to to keep it. Um, I I think to keep it is not a big deal. It's not okay. it's not a big deal. Okay. Because it's it's so it's so by itself. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only the paneling we'd have to work with, but we could do that. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Alex. Uh, Pam. Thank you. I just wanted to confirm if someone is doing a asbestos abatement, they're going to put in their notice, their 10 day notice, and they're going to, they're going to address as many possible locations Correct. as they can in one fell swoop. Correct. And they do their job well. It doesn't mean that we do a hundred 10 day notices. That's correct. It, it just, it, it, if they do their job well, yes. And it's, it's coordination and that kind of thing. Okay, does anybody have any questions about this picture? Because I'm going to otherwise ask that the screen share be stopped. Um, Alex. 
think she's good. Um, maybe <laughs> not, Alex. I have a I have a question, but not about the picture. So I'm sorry. That's why I lowered it. <laughs> okay. So um, I wonder if we could uh, just go back to the screen share where you showed us your um, your project, your cost savings. You know the, the yep. chart with cost cost savings. One second. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any questions about anything that you see on this chart? Alex. Yeah, so I guess I just want to, so um, I appreciate the work that Christine did to try to identify some things and the solar panel seems like a, a really big thing. And I think, Christine, you threw out a number of $500,000, but I don't know if that includes getting things uh, solar ready or yeah, like that just seems like, that seems like really obvious low hanging fruit. And I guess I'm the fact that it's not on this list. I'm like, wh well, what else are we missing? Or I don't know. Uh, you know what, Alex, we did our yeah. best, right? No, we, I, I, we I don't mean it. Friday yeah. afternoon to put this list together and we've been working on it. We, uh, the solar panels we always thought was not a non-negotiable item. And that's why it was still on the list. It wasn't on this list. But it does have to be solar ready. The question, right. Ellen, if you could just on this, is if the solar panels were omitted, would that involve significant redesign on no. your end? No. Okay. No, it would still have to be the pipes and everything run up yep. there. But that that's no, the panels that not redesigned, no. Yep. And actually, an, an added bonus to if we did take the monitor out, um, we could get more solar panels in uh -huh. in the future. Yeah. Okay. Any questions about this chart? I, I just had one other question about the mm -hmm. window about the windows. Yeah. So yeah, Alex. I I would assume that changing out the windows is going to impact the EUI because the EUI is only as good as the envelope of the building. Which windows? So we're talking the, about two, the ones in the existing, right? We're talking yeah. about those, Alex. And yeah. then the, is that the ones you're thinking about? Yeah, because I'm assuming changing from a curtain wall to a storefront isn't going to impact. It's it's the 1928 windows, but but maybe so much of our EUI I know was coming from the new building. So what we do yes. in the 1928 may not really have an impact on that. Go ahead, Josephine. Can you comment on that? That's that's right. We we definitely need to look at that um, EUI analysis again to to confirm um, if the existing windows, like we know, for instance, the Teddy analysis doesn't take that into account. Um, but we would have to check for the EUI and to see what would be impacted by that. Okay. But the one thing on the, win the windows, though, Alex, I'd, I'd like to hear from George what his thoughts are in terms of the condition of the windows now, right? If they're if they're held together with, you know, bubble gum, we 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 certainly looked at them all. Uh, they all need painting. Um, I think some of them, the painting has helped preserve them. Um, I, I, if you're still on here, George, can you chime in on what what your thoughts are? George. Yeah, I mean, I would say that the majority of the the sash windows uh, are in, I don't think there's anything that's rotten. Uh, mm -hmm. They would all obviously need scraping, painting, and reglazing. Um, there's probably a few broken panes here and there. Um, I think when you get, when you get into the special windows, like the uh, the the round windows in the the fiction room, the domed room, uh, that window that's going to be repurposed in the back. Uh, those may need more work, just because there are okay. places where you can't really study them. But as far as the sashes themselves go, uh, the standard sashes, for the most part, I think that they would just take your your basic uh your basic maintenance and repairs okay. 
some of them may be missing their their uh their weights mm -hmm. uh stuff like that but but for the most part i don't think any of them are rotten or would need wood replacement okay okay thank you Pam and Christine, before you get in, I just want to say out loud what, what we all know, which is we're looking to close a $7 million gap between the one bid that we got and what our budget is. Um, what you're offering here is as much, perhaps now maybe $3 million in savings uh, and an investment of maybe $800,000. So let's say a savings of a couple of million dollars. Uh, I, wa I want you to say again what we have said before, which is uh, if we were to take $2 million, if we were to invest in this redesign and save, let's say net a couple of million dollars, um, we're doing that because our hope is that when we go out to rebid, uh, and attract more competitive bids, uh, this will make a significant difference in terms of what we get back. In other words, you're, you're, what we're talking about is instead of just going to rebid with the hope that the rebidding will save us $7 million, if we do this redesign work, we're doing it because we believe that uh, the rebidding probably wouldn't save us $7 million, but it might save us four and a half or five. Is that correct? Ellen. So we we've net us about a couple of million. Yes, awesome. Yeah, and, but the the hope is we're doing that because we believe that just simply going out to rebid is not going to save us seven million. So we no. got to do something, and the hope is that we do this. The rebid saves us four and a half or five million, and we come in. Uh, at our at our budget number, okay. Pam, I have a question that's not for the architectural team, but it's for um, Paul Bachelman and, and Bob. Uh, and again, it's um, it's it's the other the other side of the coin. When will we be able to hear some of the costs um, on our parallel track of? a repair project and i know nobody in this room wants to talk about it but um the the basic the basic requirements of hvac repair or replacement um fire alarm and suppression and roof repair and i think before any of us you know comes to a conclusion at any point we really need those kind of numbers and when will we get those and who's working on them I believe oh. Sharon, Sharon, were you asking Kuhn Riddle to update their estimates? No. No. No, we need direction from you. Okay, so we have we haven't done that sub substantive work at all, other because than what we've done previously. Not, we don't I'm have not, yeah we don't we don't have a yeah. I'm not talking about a full review of the Western builders and the entire array of, of Kuhn Riddle ADA, I'm talking about those three elements that, that are identified in, you know, in the, in the MOA. So we haven't done a substantial update on that. And since we've been, since we've, since we've gotten the bids in. Okay. Thank you, Pam. Christine. Thank you. Um, I have a uh, question to um, the designers, but just on that last part, I'd be interested in seeing a number that last estimate from years ago and just with pure, um, you know, current numbers and uh, inflation, what that number would be. That would just, to me, would be um, telling in itself. But um, can, I, back can I add one thing to that? And it's, yeah. I know we're not involved in it. Make yeah. sure it includes asbestos the cost to whenever mm -hmm. it's being touched, especially okay. on the roof. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, thanks. Um, so 
back to, did I back on the um, fiber cement siding, did I hear you say that there would be some split face um, CMU like on the bottom? Is that, I just thought I heard split face, but I wasn't sure. No, so it's, we, we would, as Josephine was describing, we'd carry the brick up to the, the, the windowsill just so we have some buffer. Okay. Yeah. For me. And not so and leave it as the brick, not go with a split face or whatever. Okay. Yeah, not no, just straight brick. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Alex. Yeah, just I want to clarify to Pam's question about the repair. Um, again, for the purview of this committee, I don't know. Like, is that something like as we're sort of doing the cost analysis? Is one of the things that we should be doing is looking at the long-term cost for the town of a repair versus this. Um, I don't, I don't know. Um, and if that's the case, you know, my understanding, and now I've been off for five months, so I, I don't know what's happened, but you know, the the numbers that we have wouldn't meet building code. So the so what was gotten from Weston and Builders and updated by Kuhn Riddle has nothing to do with current building codes, has nothing to do with, so those were uh, requests from JCPC for minimum cost to keep the building open. So um, I, I, as I understand it from my time when I was there, the main stumbling block is you have to pay somebody to actually design a system. It's not a plug and play of a new system. It's much more complicated than that. And once you've torn open the building and you start getting into HVAC, everything's interconnected. So it's 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 not, it's a matter of the town or library paying additional funds to hire somebody to design a system. So- Can, so, can I just interrupt you? Ellen, please, you're sharing yeah. your screen. Are you aware of that? <laughs> or Josephine, maybe, yeah. Somebody Thank is. you. Thank you, yeah. Paul. I was hoping to- <laughs> some inside information there, but th <laughs> thank you. So, so I, so I think, I think if it's within the purview of this committee and it's part of what we should be doing is evaluating the cost to the town to not move forward with the project versus how we value engineer this project, then that's one conversation. But if that's something that's outside the scope of this, that's okay too. I guess just some clarification so we know what we should be discussing. Yep, I, I, I assume that that was our responsibility to make recommendations to the town manager. So I would Our really responsibility, as I understand it, but Paul can, our responsibility is to make recommendations to the town manager about the, the building project. Um, I didn't, well, I, I don't well, understand it as our responsibility to, like, if we don't build the building, if we don't uh, renovate and expand, oh, let's talk about the HVAC system, that would be the responsibility of the trustees in a conversation with the town manager and JCPC. Uh, that's what I, that's what I understand. It, 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 the Jones Library Building Committee, um, as I understand its charge is not to kind of tell the town manager or tell the library, you know, this is the way you ought to go about repairing the existing building. Our, our work is to help design uh, a, a renovated and expanded building should uh, uh, should we go forward with that plan? Far. Thanks, Austin. I just wanted to speak to that a little bit uh, when Pam asked her question. Just wanted to say that buildings and facilities did meet last week, and we did discuss uh, what I mean. We did start talking about what might what could be what had to be done in terms of the HVAC and the roof and the exterior and George uh, mentioned the plan the, the the report from a few years ago and the plan would be now to have George and Sharon come up with a backup plan and present it to the town Sharon am I right that's what we discussed and that would be under the purview of the Buildings and Facilities Committee, as I understand it. I just wanted to add to what Austin said and to respond to what Pam asked. Yeah, yeah, it's a fair question, and um, uh, and one that the library trustees are considering. Uh, what do we do if we do not go forward with this project? And Pam, just as you identified, we're not talking about the full Coon Riddle 
thing in the in the first instance we're talking about what exactly the things that you that you, that you reference so appreciate it okay any other any other questions or comments on what FAA has presented okay can I, so, I have a comment, Austin, just so before sure. we leave this, and I was looking for the number. So what I'm adding to that chart is a cost for solar panels, um, not using wood flooring, using uh, linoleum or, or carpet, and then investigating the archival fire suppression system. So I will add those to this list and then um, send it out, Austin. So if you would, uh, if you would send it, to the members of the committee, that would be okay. terrific. So I'll send and that out tomorrow with those added. So that number, that total number will go up. Great. Great. Okay. So uh, thank you uh, to Ellen and Josephine. Thank you. This is uh, very, very helpful as we uh, think about uh, how to move forward. Uh, Jennifer. A finance update. I, I have nothing to update at this time. No invoices to be approved. I haven't received any, no. Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, correspondence by uh, Ellen? I want to be, before, if you end the meeting quick, I wanted to be sure just to reinforce the, the idea of that we get the vote if we get the vote from MBLC, which we assume we will get on the 6th, our clock for 12 weeks starts ticking on the 10th. So we okay. will need to know by then. I just want to set expectations. Very helpful. Thank very, you. Very, very helpful. Good. Uh, I, no co correspondence, uh, topics not anticipated, none that I know of. Uh, we have 24 attendees. We now have uh, some time for public comment. Anybody wishing to speak, if you would raise your virtual hand now. And then what we'll do is we'll um, invite those people to speak. Okay, I see three hands, so we're going to limit the public comment to the three hands that are now up. And I would ask you to please try to be brief with your comments and to the to the point. But thank you. Um, Letitia to follow it. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. 18 Dana Street um, in Amherst. I had two questions and I really appreciate the fact that you um, called on me first because I thought there was something else that Christine Gray Mullen brought up about partitions and columns that was going to be added to Ellen's list. Yep. And um, it seems to me that that should be added, not just the three things Ellen had put down, but that right. was a $500,000 savings. And then my second question was about how, whether or not you could actually focus on the wood paneling around the doorways and forget about the ones along the walls where the outlets would go, which actually even in the picture that was shown are much lighter in color and don't seem to be quite as important in terms of the aesthetics of the building. Um, anyway, I didn't know whether that would actually save any money. Ellen or uh, Josephine might be able to say that. And my, my comment was, those were my two questions. Um, and my comment is, um, I so appreciate the work that everyone is doing to try to bring the cost down. This is an indispensable project for the town. Um, I support it 100%. And um, I thank you all for what you're doing. And uh, please call on me if you need um, boosting. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Letitia. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Bob Pam. I believe I am now unmuted. You are, Bob. Okay. Um, um, looking at this from a financial perspective, um, it seems to me that if you start talking about replacing the woodwork and the shing and replacing the shingles with asphalt, then you are probably talking about eliminating the possibility of getting a historic tax credit which is valued at anything from a million eight or two million dollars. It's hard to tell exactly. 
Um, so just recognize that if you save $2 million on construction and, and uh, reduce the amount of money available to pay for it, you are not actually making any savings. Um, <clears throat> but it is it is important to actually look at the effects of this last two years of design work um, on the ability to finance a repair only project. And so I'm going to talk about that for a bit, despite what you've said, because I believe uh, the town manager really has to be thinking about this. Bob, we all I'm, gonna ask, I'm sorry, I'm gonna ask you, uh, please to limit your comments to what is before the committee. If you want to weigh in on the advisability of a repair option, it seems to me this is not the venue to do it. It seems to me that the venues to do it seem to disappear whenever I look for them. Um, I would request the committee to allow me to speak on this question. Um, but Bob, the venues to do it are to the trustees of the library, the buildings and facilities committee, the town manager and the town council. Um, if you want to take a couple of minutes to say whatever it is that you want to say, you should do it. But please limit yourself to a couple of minutes. I will try to do that. The HVAC system needs to be replaced. I feel strongly that it should be with a commercial scale air source heat pump type system as was planned for the expansion project. It was to be placed on the new roof with visual baffles to keep it out of sight. I believe it can go on the 1993 building roof or if the atrium is rebuilt on a smaller scale on an edge of the interior roof, perhaps where the old projection booth was, which may have stronger roof supports. Even if placed on the ground, it would take less land than the addition would have taken. The design for this system, including all of the piping, and valves throughout the 1928 building have already been done by professional architects and engineers. I believe we now own those work products and can use them. That should save us months and hundreds of thousands of dollars if we do not proceed with a full expansion. Massachusetts, the federal government and the utilities offer grants towards energy work that meets their rules, having spent years documenting why and how we are worthy as an organization and as a project, we should be able to write grant applications now on how the needed work is environmentally worthy. Similarly, much of the technical work on an up-to-date fire suppression system has been done. Much can be used directly for the 1928 building, even if the atrium remains largely the same. The 1993 portion may have been designed with better access for upgrades, so that there too the plans prepared for the larger project can possibly be applied. Bob, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm sorry. Again, no, again the, these are very helpful comments, but it's not for this committee. Well, I'm afraid there is no other committee that's doing any of this work. Well, again, I'll just redirect you. Uh, you remember the Board of Trustees through the month? It's the Board of right. Trustees of the library that is responsible for this. It's the town manager and the town council, the building committee. These are wonderful ideas to hear, but uh, this is not the committee that's going to think about how to repair the building. This is the committee that's going to think about how to renovate and expand. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really, I'm really sorry. If you have anything else that's relevant to our conversation, I'd love to hear it. Then I will stop at this point. I was actually going to end with some, some. Compliments, but I guess I will hold on those. Thank um, you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Bob. Kelly Irwin. Kelly? Sorry, I had a, a hard button, just like George. Sure. Um, so I think this is great that the committee is digging in deep into the details. And I wanted to uh, offer support and say, I know this is really hard and that the devil is in the details and that your attention to this and the time you're putting into it really makes a difference. Um, I wanted to say to Paul, I know a lot is waiting on your shoulders and um, 
I really appreciate how much you are putting into this to make a thoughtful decision. I just also wanted to acknowledge for all of you who have been working on this for so long, including Ellen and Josephine, that you have done a really good job and we all have to uh, hold each other up and be strong as we have to look at taking apart some of the plans that were so carefully and wonderfully made. So hang in there and uh, let's hope we end up like the library you referenced earlier, that there are things we can put off now and then finish later in order to get to the finish line on the building itself. So thank you very much and hang in there. Thanks. Um, one person has added their hand, and uh, I'm going to call on them. But please, this is the last. This is the last comment, Ken. Thank you, Austin. Ken Rosenthal, 53 Sunset Avenue. I only want to take a minute to say that the person who you cut off from hearing all the comments, Bob Pam, is a member of the board of trustees of the library. He's the treasurer of the library. I want the public to understand it. I want the press who may be listening to understand it, and to uh, say that by not listening to him now, you have eliminated an opportunity to hear more ideas that you would need to know as you make your decision, which is a very important decision. So Thanks. thank you very much for listening to me. Thanks. I'm going to say again, um, how, doing the business of the town is, is a privilege. Uh, one of the things that people have to do is they have to recognize what the charge of a group is. We have our charge, and uh, anyone is welcome to say what they want to say, so long as it's within the frame of our charge. And we're happy to hear any other ideas about uh, repair uh, in the appropriate uh, in the appropriate venues. Okay. Um, I think that is it. So we will. Um, we will be in touch about scheduling our next um, our next meeting. And again, I want to thank Ellen and uh, Josephine. Very, very helpful. You've given us a lot to you've given us a lot to chew on. Okay, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.